with the removal of CPF special accounts after the age of 55 and given that Singaporeans are living longer, the supplementary retirement scheme is becoming more and more attractive as it not only provides us with tax benefits but it also allows us to save up for retirement. However, with a low 0.05% interest rate on SRS accounts and a high inflation, it is now more important than ever to invest our SRS funds. And one of the best ways to do it is by investing through endowments, which offers some of the lowest cost index funds in Singapore, while giving investors a simple and easy way to invest and dollar cost average into the market. In this video, I'll be showing you 5 ways as to how you can find low cost SRS funds on endowments. But before that, if you have not signed up to endowments yet, you can sign up with my link down below to enjoy $100 off your endowments fee for the next 6 months. Let's start off with one of the most popular investment approach out there, which is to invest in the largest 500 companies in the US, aka the S&P 500. To find such funds in endowments, head over to the endowments fund smart page. On the left, click on show more filters to expand the list of filters. We are looking for funds that can be invested with SRS, focuses on the US and our equity funds. So under funding source, let's take SRS. Under geography, take US and under asset class, take equities. Now here's the most important part. Click on the fund level fees after cashback to sort the funds from the cheapest ones to the most expensive ones. And here, we can see that the cheapest fund on the platform is the Amundi Prime USA fund. Let's click on it to find out more. Its fund level fees after cashback is just 0.05%, making it one of the cheapest funds that you can invest your SRS to closely track the S&P 500. Looking at the top 10 holdings, you will see some of the familiar names such as Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, and so on. The holdings are spread across sectors such as technology, financial services, healthcare, consumer cyclical, and so on. As for its performance, given that this fund had just come out in 2022, it doesn't have much historical performance yet. But if you look at the underlying index that it is tracking and its underlying components, we can see that historically, it is closely tracking the returns of the US markets. Now, given that there are periods where the index experiences losses, you will need to take into account your investment horizon and risk tolerance, yeah? But here's a question. How do I know that this is the SMA 500? that is suitable for me. What's nice is that Endowers has an inside article which talks about the different SME 500 funds that are available on their platform and the factors that guide the change. From the article, it shows that there are different ways index funds track US equities, synthetic replication, and physical replication. Funds like Amundi Prime USA uses physical replication, which means that they invest directly into actual stocks of the index. So the fund is subjected to dividend withholding tax. So a part of the returns will be nom 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 gets eaten away. Therefore, in order to avoid this tax but get the same US exposure, you can invest in a fund that uses synthetic replication such as the second lowest cost US fund on endowments, the iShares US Index Fund. Synthetic funds uses derivative contracts to mirror index performance. So there's no dividend payouts which means you will get to save on dividend withholding tax. But then, these synthetic funds come with another set of downsides such as larger tracking error and counterparty risk. Now, even though the SME 500 is one of the most popular investments, one downside of investing in the SME 500 is that you'll be exposed to US geopolitical risks, where if one day something happens to the US, your investments could be affected. That's why some people prefer to be more globally diversified so that they will have a better chance of achieving their retirement goals. So here's how to find a globally diversified fund on endowments. First, open up the fund smart page again, click SRS as the funding source. For asset class, we want equities and for geography, you want to choose both the developed markets and global. Finally, don't forget to sort by fund level fees after cashback to get the cheapest funds. And here, we can see that the cheapest fund is the Amundi MSCI World Index Fund, which has a fund level fee after cashback of just 0.1% per annum. Looking at the fund description, we can see that this fund tracks the MSCI World Index, which covers large and mid cap companies across 23 developed markets. This fund has around 1,500 holdings. And again, you will see some familiar names. A large part of the holdings are in the US, while the rest of the holdings are spread across countries like Japan, United Kingdom, 
Canada, Switzerland, France, and so on. Given that this is a new fund, there's not much data on its performance, but it should just track the index closely. Similar to the previous fund, this fund also encounters losses during certain periods. So please take into account your investment horizon and risk tolerance, yeah? One interesting thing to note is that this fund doesn't have any holdings from the emerging markets. This may be a good or bad thing depending on how you look at it. You may miss out on the diversification as well as the potential returns from the developing economies. For example, there have been periods when emerging markets have performed better as compared to developed markets. So if you want exposure to the emerging markets as well, you will need to look for other funds that offer this and read through the fund description and selection criteria from endowments to find out more. Next up, besides the SME 500 and global diversification, endowments also has funds that focuses on specific sectors. So let's say if you are bullish about a certain sector, here's how you can look for the funds to invest in. For funding source, you can take SRS again, asset class equities, but this time, instead of filtering by geography, we can filter by the equity sector. Let's try technology. Again, don't forget to sort by the fund level fees after cashback. However, this time, rather than just investing in the cheapest funds, you will need to go through the funds to understand what you are investing in. That's because each fund has a different investment objective and dependent on your risk tolerance. Pro tip, after you look at the sector that you are interested in, you can also compare up to four funds by selecting them and click on compare. And here, you will have a quick view of each fund's objective, compare their past performance, asset allocation, risk returns, risk metrics, dividends, as well as their fees and charges. Also, if you head over to Endowers Fund Smart page, you can also check out collections of Endowers curated funds, such as the list of hidden investment gems, which shows funds that have been under the radar but display a clear competitive advantage over their peers, or future focused tech AI funds, which shows funds that offer a unique and diversified exposure to leading global tech firms. But with that being said, if you are a beginner investor who doesn't have time to do all the research and just wants to leave the investing decisions to the experts, you can check out the Endowers flagship portfolio instead, designed to give investors a broad exposure to the global markets in a strategy and passive asset allocation. The nice thing about this portfolio is that it lets you adjust the risk level that you are comfortable with. For example, if you have a long investment horizon, and you know that you have a higher risk appetite, you can go with a portfolio with a higher equity exposure. This lets you get the highest potential returns, but also come with a higher volatility. For example, if you click on the Returns Details and Underlying Funds button, you can see that the portfolio can have huge drawdowns during bad times. So if you are a little risk adverse, you can go with a portfolio that has a higher fixed income allocation, which has a lower annualized returns, but also comes with a lower volatility as well. What I like most about the flagship portfolio is that the fact that Endowers is constantly improving on it every now and then. For example, in 2023, they switched out the holdings to newer low-cost funds to help investors save on fees. And what's the cash? Will the fees be very high? Actually, not really. The flagship portfolio fee is fixed at just 0.4% per annum, which is a small price to pay for having experts taking care of your investments, leaving you with more time to focus on things that are more important to you. Last but not least, here's a very useful tip to know. So far, we have only been talking about investing in funds to get a long-term return. However, I also understand that some of us might be worried about buying at markets high now and just want to take things a little slower. In that case, Endowers has this useful feature called Cash Management Transfer. This lets you put most or all of your SRS cash balance into a very low risk, high yielding cash management solution, which is Endowers Cash Smart. Then periodically transfer the money into an investment portfolio. So what you can do is select the lowest risk option Cash Smart Secure, which currently has a projected yield of around 3 plus percent. Then set up recurring gold transfer between Cash Smart and the portfolio that you want the dollar cost average in. This lets you gradually invest your money without having to worry too much that you are buying in at all time highs while letting you earn some returns in the meantime, which is nice. Anyway, that was a quick video on the different ways you can invest with your SRS money through Endowers. Hopefully, you found it useful. Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday.